Hello, my name is Graham Atwell and I work for an organisation called Punta Dusky in Wales. Today I'm going to talk to you about the ways technology is changing our society and in particular how it's changing the way we learn and share ideas. And I'm going to suggest to you ways in which you can use new technologies to make your own personal learning environment. Now we know that technology is having an increasing impact on all areas of society and particularly it is transforming the ways we work, forms of production and how we live. And it's changing the ways we communicate. Who could imagine 10 years ago that we would all walk around with small touchscreen computers in our pockets and we'd be constantly using those machines to keep in touch with our email, to keep in touch with our friends, texting people, keeping up to date, communicating, arranging to meet. It's a very big change in our society, which has happened in a very short time. And of course, through those changes, we're all building our own digital identities, the self, us, in the internet. And that digital identity, according to research, is being formed at a very early age. The average digital birth of a child, the age a child is born into the internet, we could almost say, happens, according to researchers, at an average of about six months. And in fact, parents are building a digital footprint for their children at birth or even before they're born. Now, in Canada, the USA, UK, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, 81% of children under the age of two have some kind of digital profile or footprint. And in Spain, over 50%, it may even be higher, of everybody has a Facebook profile today. Now, of course, the spread of these technologies is changing the way we learn. In the past, learning was largely confined to schools. We went to school and some of us went to university. And we relied on teachers for giving us new knowledge, new ideas, for guiding or even telling us what to learn. But today, that technology is challenging that monopoly, that dominance of the school, of the university over knowledge. And it's actually the changing ways in which we use that technology which has so many implications for how we learn and for how our institutions are developed. We're using technology not just to receive knowledge, not just to sit back and be passive, but we're consuming, yes, but we're also creating knowledge, creating videos, taking photos, and we're sharing that knowledge, sharing it with others in social networks, even from a very young age. And of course, we're using our social networks to collaborate, to share learning with other people. And here's what I'm now calling learning 2.0. If learning 1.0 was that we went to school and we were taught what we needed to know, learning 2.0 is all about collaboration. It's about sharing. It's about using tools. It's about user-generated content, not just the textbooks we used to have. It's about networking, voting and tagging. So learning is becoming not just a funnel-down process, but it's becoming a process of collaboration. Yes, collaboration with teachers, but collaboration with other people, with our friends, with the people we work with, with our peers. And through that process of collaboration, through that process of building a network, we can develop what I call a personal learning environment and a personal learning network. And we can water, we can, like a garden, we can pour water onto that virtual learning network to make ideas grow and allow those ideas to be shared with others through using very common everyday technology, some of which I guess you've used, like blogging, like tweets, Twitter for social networking, like posting on someone else's Facebook account, making a comment about their ideas. And through those processes of commenting, 
of tagging, of exchanging, of making ideas. We build our own personal learning environment. Not a personal learning environment that somebody else has given us, but a personal learning environment for ourselves. A personal learning environment, I'm often asked, what is it? Well, actually, it's just a collection of tools loosely coupled together for working, learning and collaboration. And I'm sure each of you will already have access to many of the tools that you need to form your personal learning environment. What I want you to do is to think about how you learn today using technology, what kind of access to tools you've got, perhaps what new things you need to make your personal learning environment and personal learning network more effective and to go and think about it and develop it. And of course, through that process, your learning will not only come from the courses you go on now, but your learning will become embedded, will become part of your everyday life, your life in the community, your life in, with your friends, as well as your life at work, as well as your life through courses. And then the personal learning environments become part of an expanded learning environment which goes right through your personal community. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear your ideas. I know some of these ideas may be challenging I put forward to you. If you'd like to find out more about some of the things that I'm thinking about, or better still, if you'd like to ask me a question or to challenge and disagree with me, just go to my website. It's www.pontodusky.org. It's on the screen there, and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.